So the context for this, um, this particular course um, is a vision of scale. Uh, and uh, that is what we've been exploring um, over the last uh, couple of years. Um, online learning took off, I don't know, 10 years ago with the concept of a MOOC, a massive open online course. Um, there are now lots of MOOCs out there, um, but they really have the, the disadvantage of, of essentially being one-way delivery mechanisms supported by, you know, quizzes. Um, and so they're not particularly, uh, uh, I mean, they have their role, um, but they, they really are not the kind of education that entrepreneurship in particular demands. And so what we have been working to create here is, um, is a, a high touch MOOC, if you will, right? It, it's, it's a course that uh, has the ability to scale in the way a MOOC does, but also ensures that students have access to, uh, to faculty in small groups to be able to actually work together and, and test and develop their, their projects. Um, it's all enabled by Rebelbase, the software that sort of brings all this together. Um, and we believe this is a very powerful innovation that has the potential to reach hundreds of schools and, and tens of thousands of students around the world. And that's at the heart of what we're trying to do. We're embedding this particular course, social entrepreneurship, in a three course certificate sequence. It's a global certificate in social enterprise and leading change that's offered through the Open Society University Network. Essentially what we've done is it taken three courses from the Bard MBA in Sustainability Program, the number one green MBA in the country the last two years running. And we've been adapting them to this global classroom approach and this kind of platform. The three courses include a foundations course, indeed our MBA foundations course, suitably modified. It's called Sustainable Development and Social Enterprise. And this introduces students to the idea of, of enterprise solutions, both for-profit and non-profit, to social and environmental challenges. Students are used to thinking about you know, government solutions or philanthropic solutions or education solutions. They're not used to thinking about, well, you know, I care about water pollution or I care about gender equity. I could start an organization. I could start a company or a nonprofit to solve those problems. The second class is the social entrepreneurship class. And then the third course is a course in leading change for sustainability. And this focuses actually on driving change within existing organizations and stakeholder engagement in particular. If you're a student, often the kind of project you would do in this class would be a campus as a laboratory project, or if you were in an MBA program, it might be a project within your business. It's essentially a sustainable business minor, three-course business minor for non-business majors. Um, and our vision really is to create a low-cost, accessible certificate program that uh, universities all across the world can plug into their existing curricula easily to support the scaling vision that we have in mind. So that's a little bit of the context. Um, and again, just a huge thank you to all of the faculty and, and Alondra's team, um, Eliza Edge and Tomas and others for just inventing this thing because no one else in the world is doing anything like this. Um, and I think it really is the future of, of meaningful and effective education in this space. Uh, having all these project builders, for example, and all the information on them was so good. Like I personally recommended this platform to the organizers of the academy because we had a huge problem there with not having access to all the materials in one place. And having this here in a structured way with uh, all kinds of guides, uh, for example, here, the, the people that are going to get access to all this information uh, are really going to see that it's super useful, especially having everything in one place is so good. Um, and it really, um, it really helps put everything into perspective uh, because even, even the moment that you uh, see everything that is awaiting, you kind of start feeling the weight of uh, actually creating a business, whether it be a social enterprise or not. 
and it really makes you consider whether you are cut out for this or not. So it sounds like an amazing thing to create social change through uh, social enterprise or something. But when you really have to get down to it and when you really have to complete one builder per week, that's when you really test yourself to see if you actually want to go into this field or not. Because we're guiding students to make a change, but we all know that change does not happen in one semester. We can't fix broken systems in one semester. We enable the students to discover their powers and to be effective in the society, you know? And one of the outcomes that I always thought that I would measure is after the course ends, you know, I will watch the students, I will watch the teams after the course ends. Are they really going through um, what they started? Are they really still having this mentality of like, we want to change, we want to make a change, we want to fix those broken systems. And this is what actually makes me proud when I look back to the students after each semester. Like now we've had two semesters teaching the course and I have so many students who they are still working on their projects, who they started another project. I have a student, um, a team that started their project two years ago and now they have an actual venture called Clean Palco. And this is something that makes us co-instructors very proud because we changed the mentality of those young, young entrepreneurs. We didn't just deliver a class for one semester. We also have a team um, that won a micro grant, the team fight against femicide. They won a micro grant and they have a club now at AQB called Fight Against Femicide. They are spreading awareness about women rights, women issues. We have a student who got accepted to the Get Engaged conference that's going to be participating in next July. We have a team in Vestapir who won the Disrupt to Sustain competition and they are filming a documentary on their project next summer. So this is what makes us proud as co-instructors, just to, to see the change in the students themselves wanting to make a change. And this is really hard, you know, because we can always write objectives, you know, and outcomes of the course, but how do you actually measure and witness those outcomes? This topic that Dahlia mentioned of sustainability of projects beyond the course in the semester itself, that for me is the main outcome. And two of uh, my our projects that were created with the help of this course are continuing and students say, because they're graduating this year, they will continue working afterwards. One of them is um, a develop, the, they are developing the app uh, and learning after they have created the prototype in the course, they're learning how to extend it functions and another course is uh, creating a book for visually impaired children they have created the spring an improved prototype after the first prototype from the fall and they have already given this improved prototype as a test to um, a school for blind children in belarus and they're planning to expand their project even more after they graduate. So this is the most exciting. And they also got a grant from Osun to support this project. So uh, these are the exciting outcomes, really. And we have a report coming out shortly, which is drawn on an analysis of anonymous interviews with students throughout the network, as well as ourselves as faculty. And it examines gains in critical thinking, especially in this as combined with opportunity recognition, where we often think of critical thinking as what we do as close readers of texts. In this experience, we're thinking critical about the world, or about the world around us. Let me say that again. In this experience, we're thinking critically about the world around us and combining that with seeking opportunities to do with what Sebastian talked about at the beginning, which is launch experiments ourselves to make change. The same is true, for example, for collaboration, and I won't go through all these bullets because I don't want to take time, but where if you read a business press article, it's all about homogenous teams who are all aligned and thinking the same way. No, we were crossing functions, cultures, backgrounds, missions, and learning from each other about what we could create. And that, if I've learned anything, is how innovation occurs.